Hello, welcome to Harbor Rock Wealth Management's Planning Tip of the Week. My name is Ruben Smith, and again, I am joined by my good friend and partner, Jimmy Lester. Thanks welcome. For, thanks for having me back. Yeah. So soon. Yeah, too. you must have had a really good time. You're itching to get back in well, the studio. Well, you know, I think I think a lot of the clients, I heard a lot of feedback that they really enjoyed <laughs> having me. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I appreciate you having me All back, right. and... Uh, as promised, I am when I when I'm a guest here. I am going to provide a stat of the day. Okay. So this is a this is a cool one, and I only have one today. They're not all cool. They're not all cool. <laughs> no, some are exceptionally cool. But the sports okay. stat of the day. So 1925, apparently after a hard night out partying, Babe Ruth mm. showed up late to batting practice okay. today. So last night he would have been out on the town. He showed up late to batting practice, and it's. He was suspended by his manager and fined five thousand dollars. So right off the bat, you think five thousand dollars? You're like, that's a lot of money. But for a, for Babe Ruth, it might not have been a lot of money. Well, remember, 1925, the equivalent now is ninety thousand dollars. Wow, inflation. So we, I, I really want to know how late he was to batting <laughs> practice, but we'll we'll never know. For ninety thousand, you might as well not even. Might go. as well just stayed in bed, <laughs> had a couple hot dogs and a cigar, and. You know, off he went. He probably hit a couple of home runs that day anyway. Yeah, right. You know, but anyway, <laughs> okay. wanted to offer you that sports stat of the day. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate your You're insight welcome. there on the stat of the day. You're Keep, welcome. Keeping that trend going. You got it. Um, so our, our discussion today is going to be on on an, a, a traditional concept called, uh, called the three-legged stool and how it really isn't all that viable anymore. So the three-legged stool... Uh, was was a a way to think of uh, finding financial stability or creating st financial stability as as uh, you head into retirement. So what made up the three legged stool was uh, we'll start with Social Security. Okay. So everyone knows what Social Security is. You pay into it, and at some point you're going to collect a a lifetime pay guaranteed paycheck. benefit at some point. Right. Exactly. So we got Social Security as one component of the three legged stool. The next is pensions or defined benefit plans. So raise your hand here if, if you have a pension in this room. I can't quite do it. What <laughs> What is a pension? I actually, <laughs> I think you and I for a, a hot second had one at our previous firm. And we did, we yeah. did. I, I was in, I, that was one of the perks of actually going there. And yeah. then, yeah. and then um, shortly thereafter, it was frozen. Right, right. So well, we have pensions, which we'll we'll talk about a little bit more, and then you have and then you have your own personal savings or investments. So yep. and that could that doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional portfolio, but maybe it's uh, maybe it's some real estate or a business venture, small business, something like that. Okay. okay. Yeah. So let's get into as far as the three legged stool. Let's talk about Social Security first. So. Okay. Social Security has been in the news and the headlines for a long time. Is is it going to be depleted? Is it going to go bankrupt? Is it going to run out? Right. Um, everything that we that we have read and we we see is based off of current demographics and figures. It is scheduled to be reduced in the year twenty thirty five. Okay. So we've read some articles which I think are a little misleading, and they say that Social Security is going to be depleted. I don't that that sounds like it's gone. That sounds scarier. It yeah. sounds a little scarier. Yeah. And everything that I've read and, and the research we've done, it's uh, in 2035, assuming there's no reform, no changes to Social Security, um, the benefits will be reduced at that point to 79 percent of whatever the prior year benefits were. Okay, fairly substantial. A decent, yeah, 20 yeah. percent cut. Little haircut. Um, yeah. Certainly something that you got to plan for. Uh, something but, that causes you to take action. Right, but I wanted I wanted to make sure that, that people are aware that it's not going away. Right, a and actually, I don't think it'll necessarily ever go away. I don't I don't know if there's a politician out there that would ever vote against. It's not going to be popular. Security. Yeah, <laughs> I remember you know kind of growing up and and people like more like my parents' age, uh, like boomer and po and, and pre boomer, mm -hmm. uh, really telling me you better be careful. You're probably not going to have anything. You know, it's that talk's been going on for a long time. For a long time. Right. So, you know, it's nice to hear that it a reduction's probably imminent, but uh, it's not going away entirely. Right. All right. right. So the next component is is pensions. So pensions are becoming uh, less and less popular, and that movement's been going on for a number of years. And in, in fact, in in 2017, uh, of all the S&P 500 companies out there, or excuse me, the Fortune 500 companies out there, 
only 16% actually offered a defined benefit or pension plan to new employees getting hired that year. Okay. Okay. To put that into perspective, that's down from 59% in 1998. Wow. So almost all the companies, you think you go back <laughs> into the 70s, almost all the companies offered a pension because that's what you did. Okay. That's how you took care of your employees. The problem with pensions is that it didn't require the employees the employee to actually be proactive in their own planning or their own retirement savings. Okay. It was just something that you, it was going to happen. You, you work here for 25, 30 years, mm -hmm. whatever it is, and here's what you can count on as your monthly benefit. Exactly. Right. And, and you can imagine that every eligible employee, you have a hundred percent participation. That's quite costly to, to the employer. Yeah. So unfortunately, pensions have gone gone away or are starting to go away um, because it's it's more economical for the business. Okay. Now, it all all of the um, all of that has been responsibility has been put back on the employees' shoulders when you because they converted over to what's called a four hundred one k. So now it's okay. up to the employee to be proactive and and more responsible and and. Um, you know, not only participating, but making sure that their investments are appropriately invested and that they're that they're looking at projections and doing some planning to make sure that they're going to be on track. Well, and it also seems like even though <clears throat> participation is obviously the most important thing, mm -hmm. it's not the only reason no. for success at that point, right? It seems like you'd have to be a little more strategic as 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 your journey or your career goes on sounds like some adjustments might need to be made to how aggressive or what it's being invested in, just like you would if you were investing outside of your retirement. Right. Yeah. yeah. The longer the time horizon, the more predictable the results, shorter the time horizon, shorter the time horizon, the more unpredictable. And why I say that is even if you feel like you're getting closer to retirement and say you're age 45 and you want to retire in 20 years, you still have probably three, maybe four full market cycles before you actually retire. So it is, it's really in your best interest to kind of look the other way. But th there is some active monitoring that needs to be, um, and disciplines that need to be put in place. And I'd say more on the contribution side, making sure that you are, you are disciplined and, and making those increases to your contributions. Because with pensions going away and Social Security maybe in question, uh, more and more of this falls on their shoulders. Sure. Okay. Makes okay. sense. So there's some bad things uh, as far as the, I guess, some of the negatives with pensions going away is that um, employees with whatever their 401k balances are don't have the same security. It's not a guaranteed income, yep. not a known outcome for them when they get to retirement. But on the flip side, real quick, on the flip side, there's employer money going into the plan. Oftentimes there's an employer match or a profit sharing component. Uh, and then at retirement, you're, the employee now has, has, or the individual has a pool of assets within a 401k or IRA uh, that technically they can dip into. Whereas in pensions, it's just a monthly paycheck. There's sure. no, uh oh, life happened. I need five thousand dollars for X, Y, Z. It's so a very one-sided benefit at that point. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So four hundred one k could be a little more flexible. You can actually take a loan from it. Yeah, there's some benefits in there, and we've yeah. we've talked about that on some of the other episodes. Sure. Okay. Um, and then the the third component of it is the personal savings and investments. So this could be uh, maybe a Roth IRA. It could be like I mentioned, a real estate investment. Maybe a rental property. Maybe an insurance product. Mm -hmm. Even? It, it could not, be. Not so much. Right? It could be. Yeah, depending on on their overall needs, you could use uh, perhaps life insurance products or annuity products. Okay. Uh, to bolster that as well, um, but the reality is, is when you look at this idea of the three legged stool, it's it's no longer viable. It's it's. Uh, it's not going to hold you. <laughs> it's not. No, you take one of those away, you, you know, you're getting a lot more pressure put back on you, um, as the individual planning for for your own financial independence. So this is really a point now where we're at in retirement planning that you, have, you need to put more skin in the game. You need to be more, more empowered into the planning process, either by yourself or if you have an advisor to be working with them in that sense and not relying after the 30 years of, of 
putting in the work, getting your gold watch and getting this guaranteed income. There's like I hear all the time, no guarantees in life. Mm -hmm. This seems to be one of those situations. Yeah. You you need to take your fate into your own hands. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, yeah, this isn't something that we can that we can go into retirement or, you know, with wishful thinking. Yeah. You know, it's no, you need to be proactive. And if you're not. Just know that there's going to be a rude awakening at some point. So sure. good um, stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. So bottom line with this is is financial success now falls more and more on the individual shoulders, um, and that trend is not going to go away. Okay. So we we highly encourage you to uh, take ownership over your finances and be proactive. So if you have any questions about any of these topics or have recommendations for other topics, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.